Hi, I'm Tony and this is Ty. We're going to talk to you a little bit about doing cone work today. I have two cones set up here about maybe 20 feet apart and what I'm going to be teaching the horse is how to go around the cones in a figure eight shape and simply let the horse turn left, turn right and go straight down the mid middles. So it's going to look something like this. I'm going to go forward with my horse. I'm going to pick up on the right rein, drive him on through. Once I get here, I'm going to go straight to a point over here. To try to get him to go straight, I'm going to simply pick up again on the left side, go left, and then I'm going to go straight again here. Once I get here, I'm going to put my right turn on him. We're going to turn, trying to keep the same space here all the time. We're going to go straight again here. Now, I'm, what I'm wanting to do with this is I want to get the point where I'm consistent going around the cones at the same space all the time. And I want to get the horse in me consistent at going straight from this point to the other point over there before I start making the next turn. So what this does is it develops your ability to ride your left turns, your right turns, and then also it helps you when you're riding your horse straight. So that's what this little exercise can do for you. Now, once I get at the walk pretty efficient at it, then I'll start doing it at the trot and then I'll space the cones out just a little more, maybe 25 to 30 feet, and then I can actually do it at the canner, which is a little bit harder, but that's the goal to get to the canner so that you're making these turns nice and even consistently every time, going down the straight area, straight with the horse riding between your legs and being straight every time. So that's the goal, but this is the beginning of it right here. It's simply take a, pick your horse up, keeping somewhere here. I remember when when you fly a plane and you're making your turns, you look at a reference point about arm's length away and then you'll turn around that point and that'll keep you consistently about the same spot. So that's the same thing you want to do with your eyes. You want to look down here, kind of focus in at the same distance and then ride your horse so that you stay that way. You can tell that Ty is simp, well, there he came in too close, but he's staying pretty close. Then once I go here, I pick a point out on the horizon, drive straight to it, then I start my turn and start over again. Another point out on the horizon, I go straight to it, and then I start my turn again, keeping up with the same distance here. What this is going to teach you, a lot of times we get out and we ride our horse, and we see someone riding in a straight line or we see someone going around columns and we go, oh, that's easy. I can do that with my horse. But more often than not, what we realize is when we try to do it and we try to do it at a certain pattern, then we realize it's a little more difficult than we, st we thought it was. So that's why we do this exercise at the walk to get you kind of used to making your horse go exactly where you want him to go. Because once we pick this up and start doing it as a trot in a minute, you'll see that it gets a little more intimidating for you as the rider because you're concentrating on hanging on and for the horse because the added speed means added emotion. Okay, so then we'll try it next at the trot. Okay, now that you've saw how this works at the walk, now we're gonna speed tie up a little bit and try to do it at the trot. Now, at the walk, he got it down pretty good and we didn't complain too much. Over here, we drifted in a little bit and sometimes he was looking out there, maybe at the squirrels or something and he would drift off of straight line there. 
but now we're fixing to add a little speed to it. And this is just a little speed. We're just going to go up to, from the walk to the trot. But with that, you're going to see that with that extra speed, we're going to have to deal with a little more extra emotion. And then I've also got to try to keep up off of his back so that it's more comfortable for him to carry me this way. I don't post. So I just simply rise up in my spurs and stay off of his back the best I can. So here we are. We're going to try this at the trot. Now, bear in mind that this is going to look a little messier than the other one did, but that's okay because when we first start anything new, we may get it wrong, but getting a little bit of it right, and then we focus on that and we keep building on that little bit of right that we do. And that's how you make a better horse and a performance horse. So now we're going we're gonna to come around. We're going to get Ty used to going around one time, get him thinking about it, but we're going to add a little speed to him. Add a little more speed. Add a little more speed. Add a little more speed. There we go. Now the trot. Keep his head down. Make him turn. Keep his head down straight. Turn. Straight. Turn. Drive him on, drive him on. Make him go forward. And then we stop. So, you notice that when we started doing that at the trot, that his head wanted to elevate up with that extra emotion, and we had to control him wanting to leak out from one side or the other when he made the turn. But that's normal. But now, when you normally do this right here, I normally do it for 15 minutes at a time. By the end of about 10, 11, 12 minutes, the horse finally understands exactly what you want. In those last two or three minutes, the horse is starting to do it really good. So don't get discouraged. I know it's a you know, when I, t I actually time this one, normally I don't wear a watch or anything, but when I do these, I actually take a watch with me and I actually time it. Because when we do this, You've got to go past the point in time where the horse isn't doing it correctly until the point where the horse is finally doing it correctly. And that takes about 10, 11 minutes. So the last two or three minutes of the 15 minutes, the horse is doing it correctly for you. And believe me, do this a few times and get the horse constant at making these turns and going straight down here. And if you're a barrel racer or something like that, you'll find that this will improve the way that your horse performs when you compete in those events. I hope that helped a little bit, and now we'll go to the next section of this. Okay, now that we've done this, the comb work at the walk, and we've done it at the trot, now we're gonna try it at the canter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here, we're gonna move our cones out an extra four or five feet. Oh. I'll tell you, the taller your horse is, the harder it is to move these things. But that's a good exercise for your horse to get him used to moving whichever direction you want him to. These are the reasons why we teach our horse to move sideways, to do lateral movements, and all of that. Because if we've got a job we want to do and we don't want to get off the horse, then we've got to have a way to get the horse to help us do these maneuvers without getting off of and getting on the ground. Okay, so now we've moved these out a little bit further. And now we're going to do it at the canter so you can kind of see what it looks like. Now, I'm going to start going back to the left and I'm going to build up a little speed. I'm going to trot him through it one time to kind of build up his energy. Once I get him used to the trot, then we're going to go ahead and push him forward. At the canter. Look how far he went out there.
look how far he goes that way. But of course we know he goes that way because he's, it's time for him to eat. So that's what it will look like at your canner. Now, over here on this side, the, his shed's over there, and that's where he eats his supper at, and it's about supper time. So he was drifting out that way, so I had to put more control on him. But you notice that the other one, he would cut the corner really short. So then, I'd, after a few times of doing this, I would have literally had to push him off of the cone to have a little room in between the cone because your horse will always start leaking at the shoulder which means he's pushing that way when turning left or he'll start cutting in too short to try to get to where he wants to go faster or slower. So those are the things that you have to look for when you start doing this at the canter. Now I hope that helped you a lot and now we'll go to the next part of this.